Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I will be giving a short review on the Kia Stonic. I will also take it out for a short test drive and I hope you enjoy it. If you haven't yet done so, please subscribe to my channel. Videos are uploaded weekly and make sure to hit the bell icon so as you get notified every time I upload a video. We'll start off with the boot where you get 352 liters of boot space in the Stonic, which is a little more than the Kia Rio hatchback, but significantly less than some of the Stonic's larger rivals. The Peugeot 2008 has 410 liters and you can have up to 455 liters and the Renault Capture with the rear seats pushed forward. With the seats folded, you can get a maximum of 1,155 liters and a flat load floor. But again, the rivals do better. At least the Stonic has a wide open tailgate, so access is easy, but there's a pronounced loading lip, although it's no worse than you'll find in a Seat Arona. Going into the back seats, the Stonic's rear space is below par by class standards. Headroom is fine, but legroom is tight compared with that offered by the Seat Arona or the much larger Kamik, especially if there's someone tall sitting up front. While the interior width is fine up front, it doesn't translate to the rear and trying to seat three adults in the back is a bit of a squeeze. There's not a lot of room for odds and ends in the rear either. You get a couple of small door bins and map pockets on the back of the front seats and that's about your lot. Over the years, Kia has built a reputation for producing decent SUVs and crossovers, but the Kia Stonic is something different. While sister models like the Sorento and Sportage deliver practicality and some of affordability, the Stonic taps into the small crossover market where style largely takes over from practicality. As a result, the Stonic features a sportier look, although compared to some models in the class, it's still fairly restrained. It's based on the same platform as the Kia Rio Super Mini, so all models are front wheel drive, but the raised right height means there's a higher driving position. Engines, gearboxes, and even the interior of the Stonic are also carried over from the Rio. But while the car's name is a combination of speedy and tonic, there isn't much of the former on show through the range. The Stonic feels solidly made inside, where you press when you press the, the prod and dashboard, nothing wobbles and all the switches and buttons feel nicely damped. The Stonic comes in a single five-door body style and while the engine range used to comprise of two petrols and a diesel, a limited 2020 facelift saw various options removed in favor of the only current choice, namely a 48 volt mild hybrid assisted and turbocharged petrol three cylinder one liter engine with a choice of 99 brake horsepower or 118 brake horsepower outputs both with the additional options of six-speed manual or dual-clutch auto transmissions. Prices start from around £18,650 here in the UK and top out at close to £28,000. And there are a choice of four trim levels, two GT Lines Connect and GT Line S. The entry level Stonic comes with 16-inch alloy wheels, roof rails, projector headlamps with LED running lights, an 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto plus cruise control, air conditioning, rear parking sensors, and forward collision avoidance. Would you believe that? The GT Line gets 17-inch alloy wheels, privacy glass, LED headlamps, electric folding mirrors, and privacy glass, plus navigation, a reversing, a reversing camera, auto air conditioning, and a black cloth and Faux leather interior. Connect adds two-tone paint, LED rear lights, and a smart key ignition, while the GT Line S brings heated front seats, smart cruise control, blind spot collision warning, and front parking sensors. If you can afford it, the 118 brake horsepower engine is the one to go for. It's certainly a gutsier than the equivalent Renault Capture, although those looking for even more punch should aim their gaze towards the Ford Puma or Volkswagen T-Roc. The Stonic is predicted to hold on to its value as well as the Puma, and you should get a better return in three years than with equivalent C3 Aircross. Low expected depreciation doesn't always translate into attractive finance rates, but hold out for one of Kia's offers if you want a good deal. Rivals for the Stonic kick off very close to home because the Hyundai Kona shares a platform and running gear with the Stonic, but comes in a more adventurous shape with a broader range of engines and the options on, of an auto box and four wheel drive. There's also an EV model on offer. Kia have created a car that feels more agile, is relatively roll free, and handles in a composed and tidy fashion. The steering is light, if lacking in a feel, and the gear change is light and slick. While the Stonic has enough grip, it never quite feels settled on the move. The suspension fidgets around and the, and the damping over aggressive bumps is not as smooth as some rivals. The Kia isn't as comfortable or as relaxing on the motorway as some of its competitors either. There's not much roll and you can carry a good amount of speed through corners, but the Stonic never feels fun in the way a Seat Arona does. Neither does it inspire as much confidence as this unsettled edge undermines much of the car's other unacceptable dynamic qualities. I mean acceptable dynamic qualities, my apologies. Well controlled, but on the firm side, is a good way to sum up the Stonic's ride. 
Its wheels tend to follow little road undulations, causing the suspension to send a shimmy through the interior as they do so. If you pass over a ridge, there's a thump. Not an overly harsh one, but enough to make you notice. At motorway speeds, the Starlink fidgets a little on roads that look perfectly flat. It's not as stiff as the Mini Countryman, but, you, but you'll experience an altogether smoother ride at all speeds in the Skoda, Kamek and the T-Rock. The Starlink's relatively slim windscreen pillars make it pretty easy to see what's in front of you from behind the wheel. The view backwards isn't too bad either. The rear pillars are thick and the rear screen is quite deep. Kia's 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system is one of the best on the market at this price, and it rivals the Seat Arona setup for usability and clarity. The graphics are a similar resolution, although they could be sharper still, and with app icons, that mean the layout works like a smartphone, it's easy to use. When it comes to smartphone connectivity, the Kia offers Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and so gives an alternative option for SatNav, if you're not keen on the default nav setup. On top of this, connected services with TomTom, -tom, live traffic for the built-in nav, or a reversing camera, Bluetooth, and a six-speaker stereo, all included in the price. Given how much the Kia costs, you'd expect nothing less. Another area where the Stonic may fail to meet the desires of its potential owners is a seat height. Lots of buyers look to SUV-type vehicles for the reassuring and commanding driving position, yet the seats in the Stonic are set relatively low compared to most of its rivals. That said, if you're after a sportier driving position, this car could fit the bill. There are lots of practical touches when it comes to cabin storage, though. You get big door pockets up front, a pair of cup holders, and a 7-liter glove box, as well as useful storage built into the center armrest and console. There are cup holders for the kids, water bottles in the back, a rear USB charging point, and shopping hooks in the boot, too. To sum up, the Kia Stonic handles tidily as well equipped and gets a great warranty, but there are plenty of other areas where it doesn't shine. Many other small SUVs offer more space in their rear seats and in the boot and are more refined too. Here are three pros and three cons about the Kia Stonic. It's got a punchy turbo petrol engine, there's plenty of standard kit, it's agile, it's agile handling. However, rivals have more flexible rear seats. It's got a firm ride and other small SUVs are more practical. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer as best and honest as I can. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day.